Hello, my name is Abram and I work with the Echo Asia Impact Center here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build a seed germination chamber. We use a seed germination chamber to germinate seeds and there's three things that the germination chamber essentially performs. The first is that it provides a constant temperature, a variable light source, and a constant humidity for seeds. These are three things that most seeds need to germinate well. We use our seed germination chamber in order to test how viable our seeds are after storage or when we receive them from farmers or after growing them out ourselves. Now a real germination chamber like you'd use in a university would cost you thousands and thousands of dollars and be fairly bulky. But we operate on a low budget and we work with a lot of villages and farmers who do as well. So today I'm going to show you how to build your own germ chamber for a fraction of the cost. The first thing you need is a cabinet and we have used an ant cabinet. So this is a lightweight aluminum ant cabinet. Glass windows, but aluminum and, and uh, plywood shelves that we picked up here in Thailand for about $50. These are fairly common throughout Southeast Asia. The next thing I'll show you over here are sheets of styrofoam insulation. This is just one centimeter insulation that we got actually from a stationery store. This is also pretty ubiquitous throughout Southeast Asia and it's fairly inexpensive. Some of the other items that you'll need for completing the seed germination chamber include a ruler or measuring tape, a marker of any color, cable ties can come in handy when ordering and organizing your wires, a screwdriver, and this screwdriver is great because it's reversible. One side is a Phillips and one side is a flathead. A hammer comes in handy, a pair of pliers, a crescent wrench, a box cutter or utility knife for cutting your styrofoam sheets, a multi-purpose drill bit set, and this is great because it's for both wood and metal, and the drill bit sizes that I've chosen correspond to not only our screws, our bolt size, but also to a size for, for passing our wire through the back of our germ chamber. So. The, the screw size that I've chosen is a 5 seconds drill bit. This is a 20 millimeter bolt and nut that we're going to use. The larger drill bit is a 13 64th, and this will be used for drilling the hole in the back of the germ chamber for passing our wire through. What good is a drill bit without a drill? So we have a variable drill. The other thing you'll need are two, um, two light fixtures. And these are great. These are from Thailand. They're excellent because they're, they're flat, they have two holes, and the outlet is actually removable. So you can wire this up yourself, and then it snaps right in there and creates a nice contact point with this flat base against the back of the germ chamber. You'll need wire. We have multi-purpose residential wire that we bought in bulk, but they can cut it down to size for you. So you can use the size that you need. You'll need plugs in order to, to hook the wire up to the outlet. And then you'll need a lighting source. So what we've chosen are compact fluorescent bulbs. And we're using two of these. We found that two compact fluorescent bulbs in our size of germ chamber is about the perfect amount for, for creating that heat and light cycle. So this is a 14 watt compact fluorescent, which gives us the same output as a 65 watt incandescent. These are great because they're very energy efficient and it uses an electronic starter and ballast, unlike a fluorescent tube. So we'll need two of those to complement our two sockets, electrical tape, a wire cutter and, and stripper is very useful. Now at this point you have a choice because we have our two light bulbs to provide warmth and also a light cycle to help overcome the seeds uh, inhibitions. We use these really handy little thermostats. We bought these in Cambodia. They're very inexpensive. They're easy to wire up and they're fairly accurate. The thermostat's great because it will control our on-off on -off cycle with our light bulbs depending on the internal temperature of the chamber. If you can't get a hold of a, of a thermostat, what you can use is a timer. So you can set your timer cycle to um, be on for 15 minutes, off for 15 minutes, or on longer if you're in a cold climate. So what we do is we have a timer that connects to the wall outlet, and then we have a power strip 
that we'll use not only for creating our chamber, but then we can plug in our power strip to the timer, plug in our light bulbs to the power strip for that on-off cycle. The last thing we'll need is epoxy. This is what we'll use to glue the foam to the insides of the chamber to help insulate it. Okay, how to assemble our light fixtures. First thing you'll need to do once you have your wire purchased is to strip it. I've already stripped one end of it, it's ready to go. But the other, next thing we want to do is then connect our, our, uh, our base or our socket. These are great. We got these in Thailand. I really like that flat base. Only two screws, so it's simple to install. The socket itself is, is clipped in there, so you just simply want to open it up and push that socket right out. It should slip right out. So here's our socket, and there should be two leads in the back. What we want to do to connect it, it's fairly easy. Take our nice clean stripped wire, and it doesn't matter which is the positive or the negative at this point in time. Insert the wire lead into the socket, and nice and secure in there. We could leave it at this, but there is a chance that it would short if these wires touch or would come undone. So this socket's handy in that it, it already has uh, an area for you to pull the wire through it, just like that and bring it up and around. And what this does is it locks the wire in place so that even if you tug on it, you're not going to get rid of those leads out of the socket itself. So those leads are going to be nice and snug in the socket. So you've done that. We want to bring this around. I might have to pull a little more out. Bring it around and over and up. Pull it through. See how that locks it in place? We'll do it with this one as well. Pull it through, and it actually locks that wire nice in place. So you can see that assemblage right there. We've got a good contact, wire to leads, and a nice tight, it's not going anywhere, so even if it gets tugged accidentally, it's fine. Last thing we want to do, thread our wire through so it goes the proper way, and then simply snap our, snap our socket into the base. All right. Now that we have our sockets ready to go, we actually want to install them into the chamber. In order to do this, it's easiest if you remove your socket from your base. So we're just going to pop that out. That's one of the beautiful things about these sockets is that it allows us just to have the base to work with. And what we found is that the best place for putting our light bulb is somewhere near the middle of the chamber for even heat distribution. So we're going to take a marker. Then we want to make sure that it fits through our hole so we can mark the inside of the cabinet. So I'm just going to simply take this and mark our two dots where we're going to drill. So, so we're going to... If you can see that, we have two nice dots. Those are going to be our, our drill guides. All right, now that we have our dots, we want to, to use our 5 30 seconds bit in order to drill those out to allow us to, to secure our socket and our base to the back of the germ chamber. We're going to try to get these as straight as possible, a nice clean hole through the back. There's the second one. With any luck, when we put our base on it, we should be able to see daylight through both dots. And indeed, we did. Next, we're going to drill a hole for our wire. So I'm going to use our 13th 64 bit for this. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere near the middle of those dots, we're going to put a hole through the back. Then we're going to bore it out a little bit to make sure that that flattened wire can pass through a round hole. So you should have now three holes two for securing the base to the back of the cabinet. One for allowing the wire to pass through it. Okay, in this option for wiring, we're not going to use a thermostat. But we're just going to use our two sockets connected directly to a power strip, which is controlled by a timer for giving us that on-off cycle. So we have our two sockets. Our bases have been installed into the cabinet. So all we're going to do is use these these nice um, these nice prongs. Which you can just get just about anywhere. These are great because they have a removable top and bottom, so we just unscrew it. And then inside we should have leads connected by screws. So I'll simply remove the top panel. Inside you can see our two leads. And um, it's not important what is, what is positive or negative. All we want to do is make sure that we get good contact between our wire and our leads. And I can screw it right into place. So we've got good wire to 
wire to screw contact, simply screw it in place. So there's one, and we'll just do the same thing for the other one. And we have one of our bulb sockets ready to go. We just do this for the other one, it will be in good shape. Here we are with our second option for controlling our lighting. The first was the on-off cycle using the power strip and the timer. Second one, we're actually going to use this thermostat, which we purchased off the shelf in Cambodia. We've yet to see them here in Thailand, but it was really inexpensive, and it has a gradient from 0 to 50. This itself is the thermometer for controlling it. On most thermostats, if you turn it over, there'll be a wiring diagram. Basically, there's a switch in here that turns on and off when the temperature reaches a set point. And so, um, we'll use this thermostat, we'll wire it up. Second things that we have are our sockets. We wired these up before. They're ready to go. So we're going to wire these up. Um, and I'm going to show you right here how to do the wiring for the thermostat. But in reality, we won't do the wiring until we get the sockets into the germ chamber. Remember, the wire has to go through the back. If we wire it all up and get it connected to our plug, it's not going to fit. So I'll show you here, um, and then we'll, we'll show you when it's actually wired up to the, the cabinet. Our other piece of wire is just an auxiliary piece of wire that we're going to use to bridge the thermostat with the, with the plug. And that's our fourth wire, is our plug wire. So it has a plug attached to it. This is where we're going to plug into the wall and then through the thermostat into the sockets. I'll show you how we do that. In this case, it's very important to maintain polarity. That means using the plus and the minus and only wiring plus wires to plus wires, negative wires to negative wires so that your flow of electrons is, is correct. And so, in our case, we're going to use the black, and then the, the I'm going to call this the clear, the one that has no markings. So you're only going to want to attach black wires to black wires, clear wires to clear wires. If you get these crossed, you can fry your circuit, you can trip your fuse, you can blow your thermostat. So it's really important to keep that straight. First thing we want to do is connect our plug wire to our thermostat. And we're not going to attach both of them directly. We're actually only going to attach one of our wires to the thermostat. So in our case, we're going to use the clear wire. So I've spliced and I've, and I've stripped the wire. Notice what I've done to the clear wire. To get it fit through our thermostat um, lead, I need to actually split it. And what will happen is we're going to thread it through the lead on the proper side, looking at my wiring diagram. Going to thread it through there get it nice and secure. So when we have it threaded through, you can actually then attach it to itself. That gives us a nice good contact. Just like that. Now to help secure that, I'm going to use a little electrical tape. This is really good. This will help you avoid any shorts. If you have the plus and the minus wires touch each other when you have current through it, you're going to have a short, which can cause a fire, can trip your circuit, it can be a real problem. So we're going to tape, tape that off nice and tight to prevent any, any shorts from happening. So we've got our electrical tape on there. doesn't have to be perfect, just has to do the job. Notice our black wire is just going to stay off. And that's going to go directly to the light bulb. So we only need one wire into the thermostat. This is going to go directly to the light bulbs. Alright, in this next phase we're going to use our auxiliary wire. Notice that I, I strip both ends and split the clear wire just like I did on the plug wire. We're going to attach this split clear wire to the thermostat and attach it just like we did to the plug. So we're going to get it nice snug, nice and snug on there. And then we're going to attach it additionally with another piece of electrical tape. Your electrical tape on there, avoid any, any fires, any, any short circuiting from happening. We get optimum efficiency too. So essentially what we've done is we've taken our plug wire, the clear portion is going into the thermostat, the thermostat is acting as our switch, on off, clear portion is coming out, and then we're going to attach the black portion together. So we're going to attach these two black leads to each other. So the black will therefore be going straight from the outlet and the plug directly into our wire bypassing our thermostat. 
We're going to tape this up as well. Get that nice and snug, good tape job on it. We can come back in a bit and retape all these joints once we have it in the box. So, at this point in time, we just have our auxiliary wire coming out of the thermostat. And so, it, we're ready to go. We can now hook up each of our sockets to this auxiliary. And we do it just simply by connecting the black and the clear together. And because we have one light bulb, we'll just put the first one on. Black to black, clear to clear. Depending on how much output you need heat-wise and light from the light bulb, you can use one bulb for your chamber, you can use two bulbs for your chamber, three, four. The great thing about this chamber is it's very modular. So you can use as many bulbs as you need. And we're just going to do these just together. They're going to be completely together, so we're going to go directly from both sockets to our auxiliary wire coming off of our thermostat. So again, black to black. So I have three wires all coming together and clear to clear. And with this joint, because they're so close together, maybe pull it apart a little bit. We want to avoid, if these were to touch, the black and the clear together were to touch the positive and the minus, we would get a short. We'd have problems and so we want to make sure that we tape those joints up individually, get them nice and snug. Now we want to test to make sure our thermostat's working properly. So again, we'll hook everything up and use the power cord. So there's nothing yet. You can just test your thermostat by taking you that click. So it looks like our thermostat works. Now now we'll see if, if our thermostat will kick off once it hits that temperature, the optimum temperature. All right, it looks like it worked. Now that we've assembled all of our wiring, we've figured out how to hook up the thermostat, we've drilled our holes, the next thing we want to do is insulate the germ chamber. You'll notice that we, uh, we don't have any of our sockets installed yet because we want to fit our foam sheeting exactly to the dimensions of the cabinet. We'll then cut the holes for the sockets to get a really nice snug fit. So, what we'll do is we want to insulate every surface that we can in our cabinet. When we do this, we want to make sure that the, the foam insulation is snug and can fit in the, on its own and stay in place. We're going to glue it with epoxy just to make sure we keep it there. Alright, now that we have our, our dimensions um, measured for our, our foam insulation, we need to cut those foam sheets. And again, it's really important to try to get your foam as tight as possible. We will be using epoxy to affix it to the inside of the germ chamber, but having a nice tight fit will help hold it in place. So it's really important that when you make your measure before your cut that you do it as precisely as possible. Once we have our dimensions marked, we we'll actually do the cutouts. Use a nice sharp box cutter to do this. It's good to have something that we're on a very old floor, so we're not going to hurt it. But if you have a piece of, of cardboard you can put down, that'll just help. Uh, keep your, your blade nice and sharp. Also, doesn't hurt to use a nice ruler. You want to keep it nice and straight. So we're going to use our handy dandy plastic ruler. Alright, now that our piece is cut to size, we want to see how it fits. And the foam gives a little bit, but you want to be careful when you're putting it in that you don't break it. It can bend it a little bit by necessity to fit it inside. So you want to get it in there. And it should just snug right in, as is the case of this. Now, we haven't put epoxy on it yet, but we just want to make sure it fits nicely. Now, for the other sides, we don't have to do anything extra. But for the two back sides, we're actually going to need to cut out a slot for our, for our light bulb bases. So I'll show you how we do that next. All right, I flipped the germ chamber around. I've got my piece of styrofoam inside, just snug in place. We haven't glued it yet. The reason being is that we actually need to cut out in our styrofoam a hole for our light fixture. And this will help ensure that we get a nice sealed compartment. So what we're going to do, you can see the three holes. Remember, the two holes are for the base of the bulb, which should line up perfectly. The middle hole is for the wire. And so with that styrofoam in place, we're just going to take a nail or a screw 
and you just want to poke, poke your styrofoam. You want to make sure you can see it, so just poke it where those three holes are. Then that will guide us in, in making our cutout. So, so with our base, we want to line up our two, our two holes with the middle, just to be sure that we got it completely. So we're going to line it up just like that. Then we want to take our marker and just trace around our base. And we're going to cut this circle out. And with a little bit of luck, we should have a very snug base for our bulb that has a well-insulated cabinet. So we've got our circle. And then I'm just going to freehand this using our box cutter. Should just be able to cut that right out. And voila, we have a uh, nice back piece ready to be attached to the cabinet. One other thing that you might want to do, if you're using a thermostat, we need to get our bulb inside the germ chamber from the outside. And if you're just going to use a timer, you don't need to do this step, but I'm going to make sure this is inside monitoring our temperature. So before we glue our, our foam in place, we're going to punch a hole through the corner in order to slip that bulb in. So we're just going to use a, a large diameter drill bit and go right in through the corner. Okay, now that we've got all of our pieces cut, we, uh, we want to dry fit everything, just like a woodworking project. You can see that we've got all of our pieces of foam really tightly in place, which is good. That means we have a nice, tight contact. Um, so we dry fit it. You can see in the back, we have our bolt bases cut out, and they fit snugly. Before we actually glue our foam in place, one thing that you want to make sure is that all your surfaces are clean. Now that all your cutting is done and everything has been drilled and ready to go, we want to take our foam out. Don't forget which foam piece is which. Using a little, little bit of alcohol, so just rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, we just want to clean. You can use a skirt bottle as well. Let's clean all of our surfaces so we don't get rid of any grime or residue. Okay, now it's time to glue our foam pieces in place. We're using a 20 minute epoxy and this is actually a little bit long working period. I'd rather have a, a 5 minute epoxy just because it'll help cling more quickly, but this is what we can get in Thailand. And what we want to do is then dab our epoxy in, in areas. You can use it liberally. Dab it in a couple of areas on the back side of our back side of our foam. Especially in the middle and the corners, we're going to get the most potential of it falling off. I also want to put a liberal amount around this opening. This is probably the weakest point of our whole cut. And this piece is on the back top corner, so I want to make sure we get a lot around here. We don't want our foam falling off. Alright, now that our, our epoxy is on, we want to gently put our foam in place. And with any bit of luck, should make good contact between the foam and the back surface. I'm going to apply nice pressure, especially in those corners where the epoxy was, in the center and around the opening for the bowl base. Our epoxy is set. We're ready to do the final wiring. So I've taken apart our, our thermostat and it's uh, ready to be wired up. Remember we have to, to wire our, our sockets and uh, thread them through. So here's one of our sockets. I showed you how to wire up the thermostat earlier. So first things first, we want to get our socket into the base. So we'll just click it right in here. With its, when it's ready to go, we're going to thread our wire through the large hole that we drilled in the back. With any luck, that should pull right through. So all of our wiring is going to run on the outside of the cabinet, and it's going to help keep it insulated. So then next, we're going to get our, 
our base into place. And just simply a matter of simply a matter of using our our nuts and our bolts to hold that base right in place. The other, the other thing that we want to do since we're looking at this here is using that other hole we're going to thread our thermostat through that hole we got our thermostat on top the thermostat's going to come right through here and this way we can control our lights inside the chamber so we can just leave our, our thermostat right there in the chamber to, to regulate the temperature all right well here we are finishing up um, we have our thermostat installed Right here, our light bulbs are on. I used a nice cable tie just to help hold our wires in place and keep our thermostat trying too much strain on it. Last thing you want to do, now that your, your germ chamber is ready to go, is to give it a nice final rub down with some rubbing alcohol just to sterilize it. Get it ready for your first batch of seeds and petri dishes. And uh, let's just check to see how our thermostat's doing. Should be able to turn it on and off these. And uh, when you close the doors, you should be able to see if the light's on. And then as the temperature rises, it should go off for your preset. All right, now that our thermostat's wired up, our light bulbs are installed. You can see the seed germ chamber in action. In this one, we have uh, some moringa seeds that we've plated up. And we're using this to, to do some germination. And in this one, we actually have some moringa leaves that we are drying down using the, the modular technique that I showed uh, with fans and also light bulbs. So th that's the great thing about the modular approach is that you can add or take away light bulbs as needed, add fans, basically do it yourself, um, create your own germ chamber, seed dryer, plant biomass dryer, whatever you need it for. All right, I hope this has been an informative video on how to build your own seed germ chamber. Uh, from Abram and the rest of the Echo Asia Impact Office, you've been watching Neko Asia Impact Office production. You can check out some of our other videos and future videos. Uh, one that we've just completed is on seed germination. Actually using your seed germ chamber to germinate seeds. Look for other Echo Asia Impact Center videos on very appropriate, low-cost technology.